um, uh, banking uh, and real estate and hotelry business. Uh, and in USA, we invest in new technology, data management, banking. Uh, I'm the founder of Bank Med, which is the first uh, uh, digital uh, USA bank. And we are the only bank in USA that has a crypto license for crypto loans today. Uh, I'm investing in few uh, democratization of data collecting company USA. And I love art. I invest in art. I'm an artist myself. And I'm a good friend of uh, one of the best person in the industry, who is Gary. And I have the pleasure to be here and uh, listening and eventually investing in some of this uh, new venture that you are doing. And thank you for having me here today. Thanks, Lorenzo. Appreciate it. So next, uh, Jordan. Hello, everyone. I'm Jordan Wabe, a Silicon Valley Venture Group. A pleasure to meet you. And it's always a pleasure to hear your voice, Mr. Gary. Um, we invest in early stage companies, pre-series A. Uh, we are sector agnostic, but we only work on things that improve the human condition, uh, B2B, B2B2C. If you are pitching today, and I know you are, I see some of my good friends. I see uh, Mr. Amos, all nice and dapper today. And uh, I, I hope you do really well. Uh, this is a great opportunity. You've worked uh, hard to get through this excellent course. And uh, I think today is the day for you to start the rest of your life. So go get it. Yeah, thank you, Jordan. Uh, Stanley, I see you. I haven't seen you for a while. How are you doing? Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and some of the things you're working on? You're on mute. We can't hear you, Stanley. back later i can can you hear me yeah, now we yeah we hear you now go ahead yeah I do, I do apologize gary thanks again for inviting me on this of course my name is stanley Agnete, and i represent some of um triodos investment management and we look to identify new technologies that actually fit in the sustainability um framework and we invest all across emerging markets so i look forward to hearing new pictures to see whether there is sustainability angles that we can incorporate thanks again gary yeah, yeah. And you're still on the board of Phillips, correct, Stanley, or not? I'm on the board of Phillips Foundation, and we actually support new innovations into renewable energy. So this also presents another avenue for this. Yeah, Africa. I think you'll like Africa Green Tech. All right. Perfect. Sounds great. And my good friend, Zamir. How you doing, Zamir? Doing great, Gary. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you. Um, I'm Zamir Shuko. I'm the GP and the founder of Vibranium VC Venture Fund. We are a silicon-based venture firm that invests in B2B SaaS startups who are entering uh, US market or who are already here. Uh, and I've worked with Gary since 2014. Uh, good to see a great progress uh, and we'll be happy to judge some interesting startups. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay, um, Eager. Good to see you, it's been a while. <laughs> yes, Gary. Good to see you too. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Igor Rabinke. I'm a founder and uh, GP of uh, Altair. Uh, we invest uh, in uh, early stage uh, startups, so do it successfully. During the last uh, 10 years, we already grown a number of unicorns and a few decacorns. So, so we are looking uh, forward uh, to find uh, new companies whom together we can bring the same to the same heights okay thank you uh, Nelly hi everyone and so cool to see familiar faces here my name is Nelly I am founder and CEO at InMind which is the leading European ecosystem for tech startups and venture capitalists uh during five or even a bit more years, uh, we were working as a vertical agnostic platform, uh, helping our VC network to identify the best startups uh, for their portfolios and to connect them with each other. Uh, but in 2021, we decided to pivot and uh, focus uh, into Web3 and crypto vertical specifically. Uh, since then, uh, uh, we are working uh, with web3 and crypto projects and uh, vcs uh, we also have uh, in mind capital our vc network uh, that invests uh, specifically in uh, early stage uh, web3 startups uh, infrastructure projects uh, nft gamify we invested in 12 projects in uh, last year 
And uh, right now we are scaling globally, uh, invested not only in Europe, but also in a couple of Chinese projects, uh, Latin America, uh, UK, uh, not yet making investment in US, uh, but hope to find some cool projects there. And uh, here I'm with uh, two hats from one side, uh, uh, looking for cool projects uh, to invest in potentially from in mind capital side. And another hat is uh, looking for the projects that could match uh, the interests of our close VC network. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you, Nelly. Oh, I forgot my good friend, Leon. How you doing, Leon? Sorry about that. You got to take it off mute, Leon. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. You didn't forget me. I'm here. So, uh, my name is Leon Eisen. I'm an uh, inventor of the world's first FDA cleared uh, medical monitor at, at Tourist. And uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, venture uh, partner and a senator at World Business Angel Investment Forum. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Gaio, how are you doing, my friend? Good to see you. You're on mute. I, 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 I learned a lesson. Hey, my, my good buddy, how are you? Good. Uh, well, for, above all, uh, greetings to everyone from Chile, Belgrade. It's really freezing out here. Uh, first of all, uh, Gary, Jordan and Jane, I would like to thank you for your trust. And I must admit that I was looking forward to today's event with ex quite ex excitement. Since this is the first time you're organizing uh, such event as uh, for for within the startup network. Uh, and I would really like to uh, uh, meet all the startup participants. And luckily with some of them, we are going to continuously work through GSD Studio. So uh, as far as uh, my background, uh, I'm a senior finance executive with more than 17 years of experience in financial management administration. Mostly I started in a corporate and third startups. So I generally work with startups, SME and SMB organization. So uh, I'm currently a CFO Fashion Union LLC from Belgrade. It's a UK Serbian business. We are generally an considered as an apparel manufacturer specializing in light white knitwear and we are a vibrant online retailer which delivers fast fashion and affordable prices um uh, as far as uh uh my consultancy experience i generally work uh, as a, a freelance consultant and mostly i uh, uh advise startups uh in uh pre-seed and seed stage uh I'm also representative of two multifamily offices and an investment fund uh, from Southeast Europe that mainly invest in deep tech, health tech, financial technology, and industry agnostic startups. So, right. uh, so that would be pretty much of all. I'm pretty excited and looking for this great pitch. Yeah, no, thank you. And um, some people, uh, Ariel, are you here? Yeah, are you here, Ariel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Go nice ahead. Meet you guys here. So, uh, do you need short words about me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Hello, guys, and nice meeting you. I'm uh, an Ariel Karan, and I just sent a message in our group. So, I'm a founder of uh, Unicorns Garden, a crowdfunding plat platform based in Sweden as well as uh, I'm a founder of different uh, fintech projects and some unique projects like we are developing uh, Pangea Ultima, which is the first digital country. It's a huge uh, like uh, ecosystem of a different uh, services and so on. So we are looking for the new interesting projects uh, connected with uh, uh, social networking, uh, fintech, as well as uh, health tech and ed tech. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, Adrian, I think I missed you. Sorry about that. There you are. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Gary, for the opportunity to be uh, here and contribute. I'm Adrian Niculescu, Segal Entrepreneur and Investor, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Tomorrow Works uh, Capital. We are uh, focused but not limited to Web3, and our thesis is uh, people before startups. So we bet a lot on the human capital. 
uh, can't wait to see the pitches and to find the next uh, unicorn. Thank you very much. Thank you very opinion. much. Hi, uh, Eddie, it's been a while. Are you here? Eddie Lear. Mm, no. Uh, ah, there he is. No? Waleed, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. This is Waleed Al Bashir um, from my Intuitive Ventures. I'm the managing partner. And um, on the personal level, I, um, I've been in technology for 27 years uh, with special interest uh, in robotics, deep tech, AI, and Web3. And glad to be here among the uh, jury members. And uh, we're looking forward to see exciting stuff as Gary bring uh, Gary and his team brings always. Uh, best of luck for everybody today. Yeah, so um, is there anybody else that I've missed? Anybody that I missed? Um, Aston, uh, you're an investor? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you for the invite. I'm um, really yep. excited to be here. Uh, my name is Aston Pierce. I'm a growth equity investor at Edison Partners. Uh, we're currently right now investing out of our 10th fund. It's $450 million investment vehicle. Uh, really focused on enterprise software, healthcare software, and fintech. I spend a lot of time in Web3, uh, VR, AR, cybersecurity, and then the future of work. Uh, really excited to see the pitches, and thank you for uh, inviting me to this event. Okay, super. Thank you. Alexis, are Alex. you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Alex Sheikh, Supercap Group Partner. Uh, we represent ultra high net worth individuals and single family offices with the current assets of three billion, and uh, we focus on fintech mainly. All right, super. Thank you very much. Let's see. Am I missing anybody? Gary, hello, it's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Oh, okay, super. Sorry about that. I don't. I just don't see you on there. Go ahead. No, it is. I think there's different screens. Uh, anyway, good to see you again. Uh, thank you for inviting me. So I am Kevin Smith. Uh, I run a business consultancy based in the UK. We are sector agnostic. We uh, are involved with businesses from concepts through to uh, raising finance, uh, Series A, Series B, uh, but also seed and pre-seed. And we help to mentor the business and to uh, hold that the hand of the founders and just make sure that they're, they're doing everything that they should be doing to, to grow. I've been involved doing that for about 26 years for my own business and uh, often being asked to uh, get involved in, in these sort of events and such things. So a wide network. And I have worked in about 45 countries. Uh, so whilst we're UK focused, we also have a, a broad global uh, um experience yeah great thank you very much uh william i haven't seen you for a long time it's been a while how are you uh hi hi gary yeah it's been, i have have not been uh joining any zoom calls or recently since the market opening up uh, hi guys uh, i'm william du from uh, engineers house uh, kl we are in financial services and uh for the last two years we have been actively investing in fintech healthcare and agriculture. So the, we are involved in uh, vertical farming. Um, we are also involved in uh, stem cell as well. So we are actively building uh, the ecosystem uh, in Malaysia. And then uh, we want to expand it to Southeast Asia the, for the next three years, okay? And uh, recently our spec uh, announced acquisition of uh, uh our business combination of a uh, fintech uh, companies uh, in malaysia um so once that is completed then we will actually uh, push it to the southeast asia region right so i look forward to hear uh the pictures today thank you back to you gary yeah, thank you hi omar sorry about that i almost missed you how are you today you need to yep hi everybody uh I'm doing well. I'm uh, I'm here representing Cube Adventures out of Egypt and uh, the Tech Ranch here in Austin, Texas. I'm, I'm speaking from Austin, Texas, but I basically do venture partner, uh, early stage venture development work and support and helping uh, investors and founders find each other uh, across borders. Glad to be here. Yeah, great to have you here. Um, Yuria, how are you doing today? Doing great, thank you. Hope everybody's doing great. Uh, greetings from a frisky Milano, Italy. Um, I'm a strategy execution expert. I've been a co-founder 
and I spend a lot of time uh, reviewing decks and pitches, looking for nice investments from uh, some clubs and some family offices that I'm uh, working with. Uh, I'm particularly interested in today in what is it about? That's a new wave of fintech, some edtech, and agritech. I think there are some interesting things to see today. It's a great pleasure to be here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marco, I don't think I, I had you yet. Are you here? Yes, uh, that's correct. So hello, Gary. Hello, hello everyone. So my name is Marco Kubrin from SparkMind Venture Capital, uh, Helsinki, Finland-based uh, edtech early stage uh, VC specialist. Uh, running a fund uh, which has a global mandate, but of course focusing mostly on your European uh, ed techs. But happy to see all the all the pitches today. Good luck for everyone. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. And Walt, are you here? Hey Gary, it's great to be here. Top of the morning to everyone. Um, sorry, my internet has been intermittent. I'm going in and out, but um, excited to be here today. All right, thank you. Then thanks everyone. Thanks to all the judges for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And with that, Victoria. Yes, of course. Just give me a second. All right. Um, so before we go into startup pitches, I'm just gonna briefly tell judges uh to triple check the voting thing. Um so this morning you should have received an email from Jane with your individual voting links. So to vote, uh, please first find your individual voting link in your email, then make sure that you are on the event page currently, make sure that it's the right event. You will see nine startups that are gonna be presenting today and I'm gonna share their um, list in a second. Um, make sure that you're logged into your profile and your profile is on the top right corner of the page. You should see your picture and uh, make sure that you see the numbers beneath each startup. So the numbers range from one to five. We had a question today. So how do you rank startups? And it's up to your judgment. How do you rank startups? But usually we suggest that you rank startups on your view of their potential of becoming a unicorn. So this can be about product market fit. This can be about financial performance. But we all know that it's um, a huge mix of all of these factors, and we trust your judgment on that. You don't need to click any submit buttons or anything. It's just that while startups are presenting, you can start ranking them. And you only need to choose the number. And that will be it. The page automatically records this information. And then later, we're going to, uh, once everyone pitches, we're going to announce uh, the winners. So no submit buttons or anything. It's fairly straightforward. If you have any issues, feel free to text in the chat. And we have uh, my amazing colleague here with us today, Mary. She is calling us from Ukraine and she's uh, one of our other event managers. So she is generally supporting me with tech support and she will be able to help you if anything happens. Um, just to see that everything here is right. And let's... A quick question, Victoria. Yes, is go ahead, voting, Jordan. Is the voting coming from Jane? Yes. Okay. Uh, all from Gary. It should be either from Jane or from Gary. Let me check. One mm -hmm. more time. It should be coming either from Jane or from Gary. And let's check, okay. take a second to ensure that we have no tech issues. Uh, this, uh, well, it's here, uh, Ve Veronica. Uh, Victoria, sorry. Yes. Um, uh, I didn't have the, uh, I didn't get the voting links in my email. If you could get somebody to send it over, please. Of course. Jane um, will double check that uh, since she has communication channels with everyone. And meanwhile, uh, while we're figuring this out, I'm just going to briefly uh, talk about our format here. So we have nine startups, and I'm going to announce them in the order. And each founder will have three minutes for pitching and five minutes for the Q&A. Um, I'm going to have my own timer, and I'm going to be stopping founders once they reach three minutes for the pitching and five for the Q&A in the interest of everyone's time. 
And uh, we recommend uh, to the founders to not mention any fundraising out loud because we are broadcasting all over the world and some countries have restrictions on that. So you can show on the slides your financials, obviously, but don't say out loud how much you're raising. And you can use chat or Q&A or other channels for communication for that particular reason. Um, thank you very much. And um, we already checked everything. And I can give you guys a word of advice that what tends to happen is that our judges have a few questions that they constantly ask our startups. One of the questions um, is, so what is your product? The other is, so how are you making money? And the third one is, so how are you different from the competition? Make sure that you mention these things and make sure to keep your answers concise and precise, just so we can ensure better communication and everyone has a chance to ask you questions. And with that, um, our tech support is ongoing. And uh, let me pass the stage to our first startup, NFTA. This is Ben. Uh, coming in from Australia, if I'm not mistaken. So Ben, please take it away. And you have three minutes and counting. Let's go. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name's Ben Gear, and I am CEO and co-founder of NFTA. Uh, so NFTA provides Web3 SaaS merchandising capabilities and redistribution rights for digital assets and projects by providing a constant sweep of on-chain verifiable art to print on demand and merchandising companies. So as opposed to other ecosystems, we don't just facilitate the multi-billion dollar resale market of digital assets, but we also cater to providing utility to those assets so that projects and uh, holders can monetize their ownership. So billions of dollars of NFTs are sat unmonetized every single day. The fashion industry is saturated with knockoffs. Uh, starting a Web3 company is expensive and time consuming and access to funding can be very difficult and stock images have become absolutely stale. So at NFTA, we solve this through NFT monetization. Our revolutionary e-commerce and profit redistribution systems allow digital asset NFT owners to monetize their digital art and collectibles. NFTs become available for everyone around the world to use in creating merchandise, fashion brands, websites, videos, anything you can think of, we can supply it. And we are providing the infrastructure to completely remove the barriers of entry to Web3 and the fashion industry for new and existing NFT brands. So we are providing real world utility uh, to the Web3 in the blockchain. So on-chain verifiable fashion brands can be created with a few clicks of a button and worn in real life and both the metaverse. Uh, we can monetize your digital assets through our first of a kind uh, monetization market. So a good way to think of it is if you're renting out your digital assets and we can deploy entire NFT collections, Web3 applications and create Web3 business models with zero code knowledge in a matter of clicks. So. What we are aiming to do is elevate the entire Web3 space. Uh, Print-on-demand companies, merchandisers, and fashion brands gain access to millions of unique and evolving digital uh, NFT artworks and collectibles to use however they want to use. NFT creators gain instant utility for their collections and create physical brands around their NFTs in a matter of minutes. Artists and businesses can deploy their entire NFT collections and business models with a minting application, smart contracts, front end, the whole shebang, uh, all with zero code knowledge in a matter of minutes. And collectors and NFT owners, importantly, can monetize their assets instead of just simply hoping that one day they can flip them for a bit of profit. So we have achieved a fair bit since we got started. Uh, we've deployed a multi-chain NFT marketplace and our zero code minting DAP deployment ecosystem, or what we've coined MASS, which is helping to tokenize, tokenize businesses in Australia already. Uh, we've ben, you with have 40, 15 seconds left, so make sure to mention all your We've 40 large want. NFT projects, uh, including rev, uh, ecosystem partners such as Hepton Chain and so on. We've, obviously, we've got the revenue there that we can't talk about on the camera. Uh, and look, our money comes from the marketplace fees. We've got 2% uh, transaction fees on our NFT marketplace, mm -hmm. which we've already deployed. Uh, we supply custom packages to our clients and tokenized businesses. Uh, we have a minting as a ser service ecosystem or mass, which generates a 5% fee on every single Thank you very year. much. No worries. Wrap up. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, it's great to have a chat. Yep, awesome. Uh, you can leave on any slide that you want. 
and any slide that you think would be most productive for the discussion. And let's start with the Q&A with judges. Um, I see that one of the startups is also raising their hand to ask a question. Let's give judges a priority. But if we're going to have some time, then you're also welcome to ask your question. So um, I see Nelly raising your, her hand. But judges, you can also take it from here and just ask your unmute yourself, ask your questions in a very free, like, open panel discussion. So please go ahead and ask it, ask away. Yeah, thank you, Victoria. And thank you for your pitch. Um, let me give you a chance to elaborate on your traction, probably because you didn't have enough time and it's one of the most important factors. Uh, don't look on 40, uh, 40 NFT projects. I guess it's a kind of business partnership, but what about clients, revenue streams, uh, Australian clients, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we say we've partnered with those large uh, NFT projects, uh, what that means is that we are supplying their merchandise officially uh, around the globe. So we've got some in Europe, we've got obviously some in Australia, uh, and we've got uh, some in the US. Uh, so we are supplying merchandise via our ecosystem uh, for their communities. Uh, we also have um, the obviously the businesses which we are tokenizing. We're currently tokenizing a real estate uh, flipping business. So uh, we've got a lot of clients in there that uh, sort of come together in family trusts. They flip properties, and we've tokenized that for a couple of you know a couple of different businesses that are doing similar things. Can you describe a one pink client? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if we have a look, we've got uh, a pro, uh, contract signed with Printful uh, to supply the actual stock imagery uh, for the their print on demand platform. Um, so they are obviously one of the one of the bigger uh, print on demand companies globally. Uh, we also have partnerships with a few big uh, NFT projects. So uh, Shrine has over 120,000 members in their community. Uh, they, you know, they make regular sales every single month. Uh, I don't know if we can talk about numbers without getting cancelled, but uh, you know the, the numbers are good, uh, and yeah, uh, we've got a few good clients there. <laughs> I'm going to quickly jump in because I think this is an awesome discussion. You can mention uh, your revenue, but fundraising mainly applies to saying we are raising this amount of money for okay. this round for this purposes. But you can mention your revenues, you can mention your profits, and hence I wanted to say that to also give you a chance to mention that to Nelly. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, revenue wise, we've made 60,000 uh, US in the last uh, what that three months. Uh, and uh, basically, all of that is pretty much net profit. So, uh, you know, the the overheads were very minimal, because everyone works sweat equity. Uh, everything from this point onwards is basically just uh, cake money on top of the cake. Um, so awesome. mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, Igor. Yeah, uh, well, the too too many lines of sales. Uh, do you have your business model? What what is your real business model? Yeah, absolutely. So our real business model is, if I can find the right slide, we are making revenue via uh, merchandise supply. Um, so uh, the actual physical supply of these merchandise products uh, for these other projects and. Uh, there's you know $54 billion worth of these projects around the globe. Uh, we are targeting those projects and providing a service for them whereby we can actually create on-chain verifiable products rather than just you know anyone throwing a bit of clothing on uh, a picture on a bit of clothing. All of our stuff is on-chain verifiable. Uh, we also have obviously our, our market NFT marketplace platform fees. I'm, which I'm so sorry, but, uh, it's enough because you just you count all your bullet points, but you don't mention what is business model. We can sell uh, it's uh, uh, yeah, we can uh, sell, business to business, business to customer. Business 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 uh, if you are a startup and you wanna become a really big story, you should have really your business model. What you do, not not like you can do everything uh, what you will be asked for. Yep. Thank so you. we're business to business uh, and business to customer SaaS platform. SaaS platform or supply and merchandise. Net yep. profit or uh, then merchandise cost you nothing. You totally confuse me. So sorry, I don't understand. 
Which, which, which you told is, you told is, that you are like B two B SaaS platform, but uh, the same main income is from supplying merchandise. If you yeah, so, supply merch, merchandise, so you buy it or you produce it, so you cannot have all your money as net profit. So you totally our SaaS platform actually it. helps facilitate the supply of merchandise. So we have a whole bunch of suppliers booked into our back end, which helps supply other people with merchandise. So we are tying all of it together through our SaaS platform okay i hope my colleagues uh, will understand uh, better than me thank you yeah can can i actually follow up on that so can you double click on i understand all the revenue models but where are you spending the time right now and how is the revenue break broken out between your different offerings and we have yeah, 10 seconds for that uh, so please uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> make sure to mention that Yep, so our current development is obviously on scaling our MVP. Uh, currently, we are also working on implementing all of our metaverse side of things. So uh, that's, yeah, that in 10 seconds, that's sort of where we're awesome. working at here on the left there, future development. Awesome. Um, please also, judges, feel free to connect to our panelists to ask the follow-up questions. Uh, maybe you will want to partner with them in the future. Maybe you will consider them for investing. And um, mm -hmm. with that, thank you, Ben, very much um stay Thank in touch everybody. obviously thanks everyone yes and let's move on to you can stop sharing now let's move on to our second startup which is image machine and coming from singapore marcus let's be my guest you have three minutes and counting hi everyone i'm marcus and i'll be presenting on about how my startup image machine will be building human connections in the virtual world so as an entrepreneur, many of my existing network did not understand my struggles. Many times I felt lonely in my journey, so I turned to online communities to seek out other people I could relate to. But however, most digital communities can feel isolating and intimidating. In these places, loneliness perpetuates loneliness. Many of these communities are centered around gaming and in these spaces, people tend to be less polite because when they view people as virtual avatars, it can be a rather dehumanizing experience. It's easy for people to forget that behind a digital avatar is a real person behind the computer screen. As such, these gaming communities perpetuate a cycle of isolation and loneliness. So Image Machine, we create a bridge to the real world. We want people to stream themselves as lifelike avatars of themselves. It will act as a means for strangers to connect in a safe manner. We want it to feel as intimate as an in-person meeting so that people can feel like the person is right in front of them. So how our technology will work? First, you put on a Microsoft HoloLens. You then see the other person projected in your view in your augmented reality headset. So on the other end, motions of the other person are reflected in real time in your headset. Any motion they make will be captured by our proprietary artificial intelligence technology that will transmit it over to your headset. So right now, we are currently pre-revenue. However, we have more than 10,000 signups for MVP. At the moment, we're connecting people using existing platforms and establishing a user base who will be our Metaverse's first users. So my team is highly experienced in this domain, together with more than 40 years combined experience in the computer generated imagery field. So I'm the CEO, I've secured grants, I've built our team and I've forged partnerships with different companies. Two of my co-founders, Wee Kang and Simon, are both serial entrepreneurs and our sales director has more than 20 years of sales experience in the APEC region. So we're currently looking for investment so uh, I, I took out the quantity because I can't measure it, mention it today. Yeah, but you know, your investment- And you have 15, minute, 15 seconds to go. So make sure to mention everything you want. Your investment will help many people to feel less lonely and build meaningful connections without having to leave their comfort zone. Come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time.
Thank you very much. That was amazing. Um, and we can transition to the Q&A. You can leave your presentation at any slide at which you think it would be most meaningful. And judges, feel free to just ask away your questions. This is Ben here. Just a quick question. Thanks for the quick presentation. What was, um, of course, this has gone through the pilot, um, pilot stage. And what I want to know is that what was the what was the challenging, what was the feedback on the most challenging aspect of this for um, from the pilot stage and the testing stage? I think the most challenging feedback is uh, definitely projecting the person in real time, because the, our artificial intelligence model has to be accurate. There's no use of uh, having this if the projection is not accurate after all. So we are still working on ironing that out before we release it for the mass market. May I ask you a question, please? Sure, sure. Yeah, what's your difference in between of uh, your product and let's say Facebook Oculus? I mean, technologically and strategically. Okay, so uh, for Facebook, actually they are more interested in, in monetizing the entire metaverse space and they are not really interested in building the connections. Therefore, their avatars, for example, are very, uh, uh, game game like, whereas you know we want to make it a more immersive experience, so that instead of seeing gaming avatars, you see an actual realistic avatar. So uh, I actually have an example. So like in this case, uh, the standard we're trying to achieve is like the woman on on the right side and the people here, where it really looks like the actual person rather than a game type of avatar. Yeah, I also have a question. Marcus, you made a nice presentation of the concept, uh, but I didn't hear much about business behind. Sure. Uh, actually nothing. What are you selling here? Uh, hardware or it will be subscription based in the metaverse or you are selling future advertising? Uh, what is, uh, um, yeah, can you please elaborate? Sure. So it will be a SaaS platform. And how we'll be making revenue is that uh, first, we'll be through advertising, you're right on that. The second would be pay to view activities. So for example, if you are a performer, rather than traditionally hiring like a, a stage to perform, you can perform in a metaverse platform and then you'll charge tickets to, your, to people who want to buy it and will take a percentage cut of those tickets. So this is just an example of a pay to view activities. We plan to host a, a wide variety of pay to view activities, and then we'll earn, we foresee earning most of the revenue from pay to view activities. I, I have a question for you. Uh, I have invested in a company that is doing uh, uh, art fair virtual in a metaverse. Uh, and one of the issue we had was that uh, a lot of the potential user had uh, to buy all the Google and everything to be able to connect on the fast speed, to be able to interact and enter as a metaverse to eventually see an art fair. And so have you thought eventually, because you are kind of pointing to a lot of young people and how to be sure that they can afford to have a speed enough to be able as an internet to be able to be and appreciate eventually the, the, the experience and how you will see to give them the potential to buy all the equipment technically to be able to be in your big community oh uh, that's a good question so actually most of our signups uh, come from gaming communities right now a lot of my signups are actually from discord so uh, for a lot of the gaming communities they actually already own vr headsets so we don't actually have to ask them to purchase a vr headset and if they want to view the person on the other end the other person on the other end only needs a camera. Does that answer your question? Yes. Any other questions? This is Jordan. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Jordan. Uh, give me a good use case, a simple use case. I'm a, I'm a client of yours. I'm a user of yours. Walk me through a basic utility of what you're going to offer me 
please. And okay. you're going to have about 20 seconds to do that. So I think this is a good elevator pitch time. Sure. So imagine you have a celebrity that's on our platform and you want to meet this celebrity in, on, in our platform. So imagine this celebrity is, is, a, is a dancer, okay? So instead of paying $100 for a ticket to watch her in person, you can pay like a $50 and you can get uh, good views of her rather than watch, watch her from, from far. And in our Metaverse platform, you can watch her in your living room as if she's right in front of you. Does that answer your question? Uh, and let's talk offline. I think the utility sure, is sure. more than that, but let's talk offline. Sure, sure. And th thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you for your time. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Um, and let's pass the Just mic. Just a small to our next... suggestion, Victoria, before yes. moving to the to the next one. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, since the good practice has so far shown that the option of raising hands is a good uh, to follow the order of each judges before voting, so that it's much better if you just follow that uh, each judge just raises its hand before moving to the next one who's asking question. Is it possible? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Let's establish that as a practice. I can make sure that the order is followed, but also judges, you should be able to see each other raising hands. So we can just make sure that all everyone who raised their hands um, got their question answered before like next people start talking. Thank you. That very sounds much. great. Sure, of course. Um, and our next startup is Simply Capital from the USA and Vivek. Feel free to take it away, and you have three minutes and counting. Let's go. I think you're muted. I am. Thank you. Yes, good. <laughs> now? now we can hear you. Good. Yes, Perfect. go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, let me see. Yeah. So 94% of the U.S. mid-market companies still use spreadsheets to manage and forecast cash flows, and because of which, three-fourths of them still have poor cash flows. Hi, my name is Vivek, and uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Simply Capital. For businesses looking to maximize cash availability, Simply Capital uses artificial intelligence to optimize working capital. So how do we do it? We enable faster receivables where our forecasting algorithms have a 90 plus percent accuracy, increasing cash predictability. And our strategies inside Simply Capital enable invoice collections to be faster by 25 percent plus faster. Uh, we also enable the customers to get our clients to get paid in 135 different ways where we are building a pay and get paid platform. On the other hand, on the on the on the payables perspective, from a payables perspective, Simply Capital enables smarter payables. We're actually filing an IP for our optimization engine that uses a variety of factors to optimize and rearrange your supplier payment dates to realize a 20% plus cash savings, and then also you know, utilize the pay and get paid platform. So faster receivables combined with smarter payables results in an optimized working capital for companies that on an average, they, they can get a 20% more cash availability, enabling them to borrow less from their lines of credit and have more money to invest in growth. So what makes us unique? So if you look at the left-hand side of the page on the Venn diagram, um, we've broken it out into three main areas. First is companies that focus on receivables products and receivables process improvement. Second is companies um, where you have companies focused on payables products, but specifically for, uh, focused on payables automations. And then you have companies that are pure payment providers. Simply Capital combines all these, these three different facets to provide an integrated working capital platform. And our unique selling point on the right-hand side is that our SaaS product deploys in hours, our AI engine seamlessly connects receivables and payables. We are building an integrated payment platform. And we also have algorithms to compare your major KPIs um, externally with your competitors. In terms of traction, we launched our, uh, we did a successful POC in June of last year. We are pre-revenue. Uh, we launched our MVP in August. We signed up our first customer, onboarded our first customer in November of last year. Uh, and uh, we, we've also signed two uh, GTM partnerships with three implementations in this quarter. Our sales strategy is a five-pronged approach. The first is GTM partnerships, where we plan to partner with companies offering adjacent solutions. You have um, 10 seconds to go. You uh, have 10 seconds to go. Accounting offices, 
Um, our second is our industry and trade associations. We plan to be our preferred vendors. Uh, and then white labeling our products with banks and financial institutions and ERP marketplaces. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to the questions and judges. You can also feel free to ask questions about the aspects that were not mentioned during the pitch because of time restrictions or other reasons. And let's start with uh, Jordan then. Jordan, please go ahead. Great work, Vivek. Thanks. Uh, three questions. Give me the key metrics on your customer acquisition. Give me how much money you need to get, not how much money you're raising, how much total money you're going to need capital. They, 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 he can uh, say, he can no, say no, how he much can. money he's raising. That's, that's allowed. That's perfectly legit. How much capital you need to get to All right. uh, cash positive in your journey for the next couple of years? Sorry, sorry, John, I couldn't hear you properly. Uh, I need uh, how much capital you need to become cash positive, not how much you're raising. And uh, give me the metrics on customer acquisition and, and uh, the customer uh, lifetime values and so forth. Okay. Yeah, so in terms of becoming cash positive, we, I, I think if I remember off the top of my head, uh, it's in my financial models. We, I think we need to be, have revenues of about 1.3 million um, that, uh, that we are targeting to be by March of next year. Um, in terms of our customer acquisition, we've got a 38% uh, uh, success rate with uh, Legion, Legion companies, where we are looking to partner more with them. We've actually signed up uh, two Legion co companies where we are using their ecosystem of members uh, to conduct interviews and also finalize our pricing strategies uh, from there. Yet, I don't have a sense for lifetime values. The value of each customer is at 10,000 a year, 50,000 a year. Give us these numbers. Okay, so we have a, this is a subscription SaaS model, uh, Jordan. So our, um, our basically our, uh, our pricing tiers ranges from $200 a month to $2,000 a month. So depending on the size of the company, you will have different like customer lifetime values. Jordan, does that answer your question? Is that good? Uh, no, 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 not really, but it's time for others to ask questions. All right. You guys know the order in which you raised your hand, so feel free to go ahead and I'm watching. Hi, I'm Willie here. Hi, Willie. Uh, yeah, uh, my question is uh, regarding the traction. Um, what, what sort of traction that um, you have had till today and are you are you tapping into stuff like gross margin because this is also um a major uh, a major bottleneck especially uh small businesses are facing uh things like gross margin again it's shelf time and stuff like that using the same platform yeah it's a great question um so in terms of uh, um practice that, that, that's what you see on the page right here. You know, it's it's heavily dependent on our API development. So our first API was we released it for QuickBooks Online. And so we've got customers lined up on QuickBooks Online. The three planned implementations that you see in Q1 of next year, we are building a next API that's going to be released this month for Microsoft Dynamics. And that's there. And a lot of these companies were closing their books in December. So January is going to be, Jan and Feb is going to be a really busy period for us. We're actually in the process of signing an agreement to become a preferred vendor for um, uh, for a granite and stone trade map uh, association, which gives us access to 102 of their members. So the conversations in the first couple of weeks of Jan have been really good. In terms of your second part of your question, Vaid, uh, we are not looking at inventory at this point and not looking at gross margins. We are purely looking at optimizing working capital using levers uh, with AI to uh, on receivables and payables. Does that help? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Um, okay, can I can ask uh, because because I could not understand what what is unique in your solution and what exactly business uh, because uh, I don't understand what does it mean to connect payable to receivable. So please, in few words, how you help companies uh, to create working capital? What exactly company does with your solution? Sure, sure, great question. Uh and so if you think about it, if your cash coming in from your receivables is slowing down because your customers are not paying you on time, 
then you have lesser money to make payments to your suppliers. So what we are doing is we are connecting receivables and payables to make sure that the money coming in from your receivables is tied to the money going out to your payables. At the same time, from a, when, I, when I say smarter payables, what I mean is we use our algorithm, our algorithm looks at a lot of different factors like early payment discounts, like late payment penalties. How can you reshift payment dates a couple of days before or after um, to realize those discounts programs? Mm -hmm. And thereby, that's how we realize the 20% plus cash savings. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for now. But you guys should feel free to connect um, like outside the event and talk about this. And our thank you so much for your presentation. That was great. And our next startup, Africa Green Tech AG from Germany, Enzo. Please go ahead. You have three minutes and I'm starting the timer. Yeah, thank you. So 600 million people in sub-Saharan Africa do not have access to electricity. And by solving this issue, 400 million jobs can be created or improved by 2030. I'm Enzo Sensi, and I'm Finance Acquisition Manager at Africa Green Tech. Since 2016, we built standalone solar solutions that empower rural communities by providing them with reliable and affordable sources of electricity, which increases productivity and therefore multiplies their incomes by more than 300%. We dispose of three business lines that address a huge customer potential across Africa for solar energy. First, the impact site already set up in four countries. Second, the impact products, such as solar power plants, um, solar water plants, fridges, and solar kits. And third, the electrification of companies and institutions with high electricity demand. Our core product, the impact site, is a holistic solution that includes several offers beside electricity generation, such as water purification system, smart cooling system, agricultural devices for the community, and internet access. Africa Green Tech is already operating in 20 villages in um, four different countries with local subsidiaries in place, um, but we dispose of a large pipeline across nine countries. First with the CNI project, where we secured deals with big humanitarian organizations and that ensure us continuous revenues for the next years. And then with the impact sites, we have more than 200 sites already secured um, via an established pipeline. And finally, with the impact products, we already have a um, considerable deal in Mali. As you can see on the slide, we trust that our presence on the field um, and our local workforce will continue helping us serve the communities and expand our activities across the continent. According to the World Bank study, the number of mini grids connected will be multiplied um, by 11 to reach 210,000 connected systems by 2030. Africa will massively increase its, um, its global performance in the coming decades and in the next 30 years, 25% of the world's population will live in Africa. Africa is the fastest growing continent in terms of both population and GDP. As you can see, the impact potential is huge and you can be part of it. Being one of the pioneers of the industry allows us to have a frontline spot in the market, especially due to our several business lines that address all types of customers in need of renewable energy solution. We hope to multiply our turnover by four in 2023, thanks to the impact products and the CNI forecasted revenues. In terms of impact, we aim to electrify 2.1 million people save 1,000 tons of CO2, provide 61,000 of small businesses with clean electricity by 2030. In order to achieve this mission, we are now fundraising for our Series B and the you investment You have plans. 10 I seconds know. to yeah. go. We are setting up to finance the impact site activities. You can be part of Africa's growth by investing in us and joining the adventure. Together, we can drive the world toward a better place. And, uh, thank you very much that was amazing uh you can leave your presentation on any slide that you want to and i see in our order um judges please go ahead we have five minutes you know in which order you're raising your hands so please go ahead and ask your questions uh can i can i uh, you... i think Ooh. we had stanley and igor before that so ah, okay it's igor stanley walid and dr Leia. Thank you. No, I, I'm sorry. I don't have questions. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'll just take it away there. Perfect. Thank you very much for the presentation. I mean, there's no doubt this is a critical um 
need for the continent. And I think one of the challenges is the um, it's no more it's not the middle grids, but the infrastructure that actually gets the electricity to the um, to the houses. Now, mm -hmm. have you factored that into your um, if I can say your project management um, structures here? Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand. Um, very good question. So, yeah, um, speaking about the, the grid, so that connect the solar tenors, um to the households, we started by financing um, the grid by ourselves in Mali, but we also understood that it's very complicated to be cost effective if we finance the grid by ourselves. So we are at the moment applying for grants. And there are a lot of uh, grants out there. I mean, a lot of grants out there, and we are applying uh, for grants in order to get this grids uh, finance, uh, yeah, for the impact side. Okay, just get hold of me. I'm outside of this forum, and we can talk for it. Okay, thank sure. you. Sure. Uh, great work you've been um, uh, you've been doing, uh, and thank you for the presentation. Um, considering, you know, the large capex, and as uh, this is uh, uh, in connection with the Stanley question, actually, um, I know that you get a lot of support, you know, to to subsidize this uh, upfront mm -hmm. cost from grants and others. But yeah. keeping that aside, what is what is the business model like? Because I see, uh, are you a fund that's funding this and then and sweated retain on longer stage, or do you? Well, how does your uh, unit unit economy looks like? Uh, we, we're glad also to connect in East Africa. We've got very good presence in uh, Ethiopia, in uh, Tanzania, Kenya, South Sudan, Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to get connection there. Yeah, um, also very good question. So we, we started, uh, we thought that we could uh, finance the next impact site uh, just by generating revenues, but we understood that in order to um, refine out, to, to finance a big amount of impact site at the same time, we needed a lot of funds. Um, and that's why at the moment we uh, are setting up and we are at the end of setting up this um, impact investment fund, as you can see on the screen. Uh, this impact investment fund is going to be 60 million, and this will help us to finance 300 impact impact site um and yes this is how we we plan to to finance the, the impact how, how, how does the unit economy look like i mean about from the fund fund okay fund uh, it's like uh, uh, it's close ended or open mm -hmm. end you know so, yeah. so is your your unit economy are you acting as a fund or you do you have a a specific unit economy out of that yeah so so basically you can see here that we are generating revenue so basically we have three business line. So the first is impact site where we generate revenues in the villages. Then we have the impact products. The impact products are the sustainable product that we can sell in the villages as well, separate from uh, selling electricity. And third is the CNI. So CNI is basically the, our clients will be the humanitarian organizations or big companies in Africa that want to switch from being from uh, using diesel generators um, than to, to use uh, um, solar energy. And we at the moment, we will make money and more money with CNI revenues, and this will also help us to sustain the impact sites uh, business line that will clear, clear, that generates less money. Yeah, clear, clear, clear uh, My question. Uh, thank you. I, I, I listened to your presentation second time, and always I have the question: How do actually you get people pay you? Because in Africa, I'm in a board of the uh, Global African Leadership Council, mm -hmm. and the main problem is uh, to get paid in Africa. And what I see in one year, you have pilots in one country, another year, another country, another year, another country. But actually, each country characterized by different capabilities to pay and all this stuff. So it looks mm -hmm. very nice on the on the blackboard yeah but mm -hmm. actually you get paid how you yeah. get money from village in africa this is mm -hmm. a huge challenge and why you jump from one country to another and not to uh, get uh, more insight in one country and build the business model within one country each country mm -hmm. is something different yeah. That's very true. Uh, we you have 15 seconds to answer that yes, question. Yes, I'm, I'm going to answer very quickly. Um, first, uh, I would say that uh, we don't go to a country or in an area where we don't know if we can uh, integrate the market and if people will really need the electricity. And second, um, we are uh, a prepaid solution so that people first pay and then receive the kilowatt hour. 
Um, and I don't know, there were a lot of questions in the say, oh, yeah, why do we integrate several countries? So, for example, we realized that um, in, in Madagascar, it's 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 uh, it's if uh, you can please wrap up. With just yeah, sure. a few the, bullet points. We, sure, we, we don't integrate a country or on an area where we know it's not going to be useful, or uh, the, the 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 villagers are not going to um, are not going to use the electricity. And second, if I can uh, finish, we believe in the productive use of electricity, meaning that the people that buy the electricity from Africa Green Tech are also and mainly small and medium companies that need electricity to generate revenues. So, of course, thank they need, you very much. Yeah. Thank you. That's very true. Um, our next startup, thank you for your presentation. Our next startup is Enerix from Israel. So, Neve, uh, uh, you can take it away. You have um, three minutes. One sec. Just. Mm -hmm. All right. And. You're almost there. Yep. Okay, well? we can see that. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Great. starting the timer. Thank you very much. Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but air conditioning accounts for the majority of energy expenses in uh, commercial buildings. Uh, my name is Neve, and I'm the CEO of Enerix AI. And our solution is relevant to any commercial building with high cooling energy expenses. By constantly analyzing the effect of external weather conditions over the building's internal temperature and humidity, our predictive algorithm proactively optimizes the air conditioning operation work plan. This is enabling us to guarantee a 17 to 35% reduction in the building's cooling energy expenses. This is opposed to a typical building automation system that offer only reactionary solution that designed and operating constantly to meet extreme weather conditions. Our main uh, challenge and benefit, of course, is the energy, but beside that, we're also improving the maintenance uh, condition uh, of the uh, air conditioning system, and we extend the uh, air conditioning lifespan uh, uh, of the equipment, and we also improve the air comfort of the end users. If you're familiar with the Google Nest, we are exactly like Google Nest for commercial buildings. Our target site, as I said before, is any commercial building with high energy costs, such as hotels, nursing homes, university campuses, office buildings, shopping centers, and even air cooled plants uh, uh, with high energy uh, air conditioning um, cost. Our predictive algorithm, uh, our competitive advantage is, uh, of course, the predictive algorithm. Uh, of course, the, uh, the proactive uh, autonomous operation. Uh, we are not just giving insights and recommendation. We are actually controlling the air conditioning system. And we also have a, a unique uh, part of the algorithm is taking into consideration also the humidity inside the building, um, which is not uh, uh, happening with other uh, solutions. We're also non-intrusive system. Uh, it's a, we're a cheater expert. It's a patent protected. It's a low-cost installation that enables us to have a quick growth and it's an independent system, so we're not relying on uh, uh, other solutions. Uh, in the US alone, there is $80 billion uh, 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 annual uh, energy consumption for uh, commercial buildings. Uh, the Chiller technology, which is the, uh, the one that we are sp uh, specialized in, is 60% for that. And uh, uh, since we guarantee 17% uh, savings, uh, it's about $8 billion uh, annually. And for that, since we are, uh, our uh, business model is about 50% of those savings, it's $4 billion uh, potential revenues uh, annually. Uh, as I said before, we're targeting only uh, a fraction of this uh, amount with, uh, with uh, 11 in three years, which would be 11.2 million recurring annual revenue. How and we get you have that? 15 seconds to go, so make sure so that you cover we're going all your to get points. To that with 443 sites, 18 distributors, equals to 100, 191,000 metric tons of CO2 reduction. And we are going to raise uh, this round uh, in order to uh, fulfill the existing strategic partners that we already received. Uh, Amazing. Again, sorry. Thank you. Thank you Thank very, thank you very much. much. Thank you I'll very much. To answer any questions. Yeah, we can start. Um, so, judges, please take it away. Yeah, I'll take I'll take the first question. Actually, um, yeah, we um, we based in Dubai here, 
Uh, we understand the magnitude of the problem a lot, uh, big size. Um, UAE is one of the largest uh, in terms of uh, capital food, uh, or in terms of the carbon footprint per capita. Uh, my question to you is that we've seen recently solutions from Siemens, you know, like Mindsphere or Trimenus, a a a AIoT, uh, that does the similar stuff. What is your competitive advantage against those big players who have already got this done? And the second part of the questions um, for uh, for buildings that has central AC, how do you normally deploy this? Uh, right. So uh, just to emphasize here, first of all, we are expert on Chiro. Chiro is a huge air conditioning, usually sits on the rooftops of uh, commercial buildings. Uh, you can imagine the capacity they have, and each one of them is equal for a couple of hundreds of uh, uh, re residential and regular air condition as you know them. Uh, we have the, um, our algorithm is actually uh, uh, enables to predict the future energy consumption of the buildings by always analyzing the effect of the external weather condition on the internal uh, temperature and humidity. And this is something that is very unique and this is patent protected uh, in the US uh, for this uh, technology. So they don't have that. And we are also proactively so we connect to these those cheaters and we activate them with a four days plan that is being continuously uh, updated uh, every couple of hours uh, uh for the for the optimized operation so for the chiller on top uh central ac chiller on top you have uh, 20 uh, floor buildings there are some uh flats that are facing the sun there are some uh, exactly, exactly. you have a sensor in every flat or, or how does no, it no work? no no we are deploying a representative sample of a couple of uh, about uh, 20 to 50 sensors around the building in uh, strategic places and with that we are able to uh, analyze the operation of the whole building uh, as you mentioned uh, clear any other questions yeah, uh, from me. So Kevin at uh, Boom and Partners. So um, two quick questions. You say it is low cost to install. Please say a little bit more about that. And you also say that you guarantee 17% uh, savings. So how do you guarantee that and how is that measured? All right. So we also install energy meters on each one of those uh, uh, cheer AC uh, system. Uh, and then we can uh, present not only we can use that to uh, optimize the operation, but we also present eventually exactly undisputable way uh, the operation and the consumption of those chillers with and without our system. It's a low cost installation since uh, the cost of the hardware, uh, it's only a couple of uh, sensors throughout the buildings. Uh, uh, it's uh, the energy meters and uh, also a mini industrial PC that's connected to this uh, uh, chiller. So the, the hardware is, is very low cost. And the main uh, the main cost is the the R and D that we were working on. Great, thank you. Um, quick question, Stanley. Who are your customers? Are they who are your actual customers? The air condition suppliers? Are they the individuals, homeowners? Are they the all right? Um, who so, are your customers? Uh, our customer, it's a SaaS model, by the way. Uh, we are working our business model through distributors. We already um, signed, uh, we have a three paid uh, POC in progress. Uh, we stop Israeli strategic distributors. Uh, and we also we also signed a full uh, distributor agreement with A2A uh, uh, Italy. It's the second largest energy suppliers in Italy. That's after a very successful uh, uh, pilot of POC that we did in uh, Milan, in one of the headquarters. Uh, our main target is, the, of course, the go-to market is the US, as I presented before, 4 billion market potential revenues. And we already have a connection and uh, we're finalizing agreement with the uh, BAS, Building uh, Automation System company, uh, uh, based in Florida uh, to distribute our uh, uh, solution. So we have about 20 seconds to go. Um, if anyone has super quick questions, you can try to jump in. I got my hand raised. Stanley, Let's don't do this, line, Stanley. Don't do that again. Come oh, of on. course, of course. You... Uh, sorry, in, in sorry. Three seconds or less. Why should we invest in you? What is sorry? Why should we invest in you? Why should you invest in us? Because you can take a very uh, you can take advantage of our situation at the moment that we don't have 
uh, a lot of revenues at the moment, and we are growing very fast. And we need that in order to uh, increase the distributor support and sales teams. And I guess a year from now, uh, our valuation will be much, much higher than uh, what it is at the moment uh, because of the situation. And right now there is the global energy uh, crisis that uh, we want to take uh, advantage of the situation. Sorry to say that. Mm -hmm. but... Amazing. Thank you. That's about what we have time for. And thank you very, thank much. You very much. Thank you for your presentation. And I'm going to pass the mic to our next startup, which is Tier Money from Canada. Michael, um, can you share can your I, screen? Can I just add one a small suggestion before moving to the next one? Sorry, I don't like to sound like an old witch, you know, yeah, with, with so much uh, requirements. Uh, 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 what, what could be really beneficial for each startup when they come to the uh, end of their presentation? Just to tell them like 30 seconds before, you know, time limits expires, please wrap up. So they just sure. can move on to the most important things that they have forgot to, to present uh, within their pitch. Yep. Uh, I think that sounds great. And also startups, um, I think by now, you can also set a timer on your own phone. So you also are aware of your time better. And I think by now you can also see the pattern in judges questions so make sure to cover some of the aspects like business model what your product is what is your differentiation strategy so that it's more clear and um michael the stage is yours and i'm gonna start the timer please go ahead good day everyone um my name is michael um my name is michael and i'm the ceo and founder of tia money um, I'm a serial entrepreneur with 20 years of experience in building and managing large-scale products, and also a chairman of the bank, the microfinance bank in Nigeria. And my co, my colleague here is Erica. She is the head of um, AML and KYC. I've also got a colleague here called Shagun, is a chief technical officer, and John also is chief information security officers. And what are we serving today? Um, um, Establishing banking operations an exp expensive, fragmented, and time-consuming endeavor that requires a diverse range of skill sets and expertise. Solution, what do we provide today? We provide a platform that makes it easy to integrate financial services to businesses in weeks and not months. What's our product today? We provide card issuing and virtual bank account, FX, and disbursement. And how do we provide these services? In providing our services, we look at the regulatory coverage in different regions. So we have regulatory coverage in Europe, UK, Canada, USA, and Nigeria. And in, us, in for our customers to access our platform, they, they, they use our API services to integrate into their own core solutions today. Our solution is tested. We've been running for over 12 months now, and we have over a thousand customers, including financial institutions, using our products today. In a, in a timeline and traction, we currently process just the FX to functional markets with over a thousand customers, like initially said, and regulatory coverage in four in or four, five regions. And we'll currently have a credit facility that allows us to power our solution to more of an instant solution. So when customers do the FX payment, it's instant, doesn't take days, doesn't take weeks. Our solution is also built with KYC, AML, KYB, transaction monitoring, all the juicy stuff that we need on the banking platform to be all regulated. And why now? And the market is currently booming, both in Africa, both in Europe, and VCs have invested over 4.2 billion since 2016 to 2021. And the market is actually growing in size. What's our target market today? We look, we're working with companies and we're also targeting companies that want to integrate financial solutions into their own systems, SaaS companies, and also fintechs that want to expand their markets today. In our competition slide. Uh, Michael, we'll... I'm going to take advantage of Gadro's um, offer and say you have 30 minutes, 30 seconds to wrap, wrap up. Yeah. Okay. The difference between us and the other competitors in the market today is we provide a one stop solution. And our business model is we charge a commission fee on all the services we provide. The market is quite big. We're looking at the 20 billion markets today. And we're fundraising to, to increase our license coverage for operations and marketing, technology, and technology development. 
and that's that's all for me today and I'm happy awesome. to take all your questions yep of course sounds amazing and i think we're gonna start with alexis and then judges can go in order alexis the stage is yours alex shakes a backup group can you talk about your uh, first go to market and uh, if you have any market validation at present correct um since we're not allowed to talk about figures um what i could say we've, we've processed um yeah, I, I think I'm allowed to say we processed over $40 million to date in terms of the FX. Yes, you're not allowed to say how much you're raising, but you're allowed to mention yeah. any other financial yeah. metrics. Yes, yeah, so we processed mm -hmm. over $40 million to date. Okay, and what kind of market validation do you have? Um, so you we're have going any? in beta testing and we've, we've had over a thousand customers and most of some of them also are financial institutions and they're all repeat customers 100 percent and why why do they um, do they want to use your platform and they're using our platform today because we're, we're targeting the frontier market with the large banks and large financial institutions don't actually go to hmm. okay thanks thank you can you double click on the thousand customers um kind of the profile of them the size um and then also the customer acquisition strategy to date. And thank you for the presentation, it was really good. Thank you. Yeah, so the thousand customers, they include um, both small and large co and corporate organizations that want to send funds to the frontier markets. And also um, they do cross-border payments. So meaning that we don't only provide one way, we provide two ways. For example, I saw some solution presently and where how do you get money from Africa? We have, we have that solution where investors can invest in Africa and using us using a technology solution, you can also receive funds from Africa. So we target the frontier market both ways. Got it. Um, and then could you just quickly talk on the customer acquisition? Like how, how have you acquired the thousand beta customers? Zero marketing. Our solution is highly needed in the market today. So it's more more of referral basis. So customers find about our product, and then they, they reach us to us. They, they use our, our solution, and that's how we've grown over the last twelve months. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Very interesting presentation. Where are all most of your customers located today? Um, in Europe and Nigeria. Europe and Algeria. Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay. Interesting. Because I know it's a huge problem to, to manage any uh, Visa, uh, MasterCard, and, and almost impossible to send money to Nigeria, to get money from Nigeria. So how do you succeed, succeed to do it? So we, we have, that's a secret source. So we, we have multi-currency wallets that allow the customers to hold funds in multi currency wallet and allow them to exchange funds between the wallets. Interesting. OK, thank you. OK, now my, my question is, uh, you may uh, first question is, uh, do you sell to end customer or it is embedded solution uh, so end customers are not yours uh, you sell to financial institutions or uh, some uh, uh, solutions which have customers so we started we started the product trying to build a new bank and now there are lots of new banks so what we decided to do was when we began to onboard financial institutions we found out that we we're better placed at the top rather than dealing with the end customers. So now our main focus is we have little end customers that are still using our platform, but our focus is now providing the services to financial institutions, giving them the API services to access our platform. Okay. You mentioned that you need money to extend your license and coverage, but you have already very wide coverage. And this coverage is your own or through your partner network? Yeah, so our direct coverage is in two countries, which is Nigeria and Canada today. The other countries where we operate, we operate through third party licenses. So um, for us to scale to the manner which we, we can control, 
we need to actually own the licenses. So part of our strategy is to actually own the licenses rather than using third party and also expand to other regions like Dubai, for example, it's a big market. Asia is quite a big market. We have a lot of demand to those regions as well. And do you have your uh, traction? I don't mean how much you get in Forex, but uh, real traction in your G GMV or net revenue. Yes, we do, yes. All and, right. Uh, uh, that's, yes. Sorry, Igor. Uh, that's yeah, about no, as no, much okay, time as we okay. have. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, but feel f you can feel free to text Igor the answer to his question. Oh, and you. also, again, encouraging everyone to connect. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, and we're going to move to Fidjo Technologies, Inc. Uh, with Jerry. Jerry, stage is yours. I'm muted. Mm -hmm. One sec. You see my, see my screen, Victoria? Are you managing to share a screen? Yeah. Mm -mm, not yet. Not yet? Not yet, no. Okay, now we do. Now we do. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, and everyone. I think you can take me and move me away oh, slightly. Yeah, put you on the side. So don't right distract. There. <laughs> right, thank you. Okay, Victoria. awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, sure. Hello, everyone. So, my pitch today is uh, humanizing ride sharing or humanizing the Uber world. Today, a ride share driver receives only 60% of the fair while doing 100 percent of the work i am jerry geronimo ceo video technologies the feature platform is the merely a connection vehicle for driver and the rider and the courier deliveries we which are we our model is based on the subscription model we charge the driver a, a subscri subscription fee, allowing him to receive 100% of the uh, uh, fare. And the rider pays the driver directly. As opposed to uh, Uber and Lyft, the feature platform <clears throat> Most. The feature platform will immensely and I don't think they're seeing you scrolling your slides. Oh, sorry. So just double check that you're doing that because we'd love yes, to sorry. see yes. um, everything there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, as opposed to Uber, Uber and Lyft, uh, the uh, feature platform we will immensely uh, and positively uh, impact the uh, social levels and humanitarian needs of the driver and the uh, rider. We, le we learned from our uh, lesson from uh, our pilot program in San Francisco that cash payment has a significant social impact on underserviced and underprivileged communities. Uh, while we are piggybacking on uh, the Uber market share market, we also believe that we will be creating a new segment of the market within that market. And those are the uh, market, the users, the uh, riders that, uh, for example, uh don't have credit cards or don't have any financial uh, affiliations with the financial institutions basically they live by cash uh we, and that's a new market that we will be creating within the uber world and one of our differentiators too is that the uh we uh, we are very transparent on the driver's background background information and also on the photo verification that's amazing, and, Jerry. Uh, you have about 30 seconds left. Can you also scroll for your, for your slides and yeah, also yeah. leave your presentation on the slide that is probably covers um, product or differentiation strategy to your business model? Okay. Sorry. No worries. We need a large going on. Mm -hmm. So we have industry leaders uh, with their, that have 100 years of experience uh, on the team. 
And Walt uh, actually is on the line, uh, Walt Kingpin. And we have Lance Taylor, uh, CFO. And we have Sasha o Ozeran, who was a former CEO at InDriver. And Mike Heslin, uh, another industry advisor from, uh, from Lyft. And Navid Safar from um, Uber. So my next slide is actually Jerry, the, uh, thank you very much. Let's let's actually move to the Q&A, if you don't mind, just in the interest of time. Yes, sure. uh, but again, I would suggest that you scroll and uh, you can choose any slide to stop on, whichever you want. And maybe start by, um, we can start with the questions, actually. Um, Igor, do you want to go ahead? Yes, yes. I wanted to ask, uh, first of all, um, uh, I see that you have uh, somebody from a driver in your team. Uh, how do you compete with them? So what is the question again, please? This question driver, is, how, how you do you can... compete within driver? You have somebody, Sasha's from in driver. How do you compete within driver? Are they competition for you? So in driver is, uh, is not in the US uh, is, uh, yet. Uh, they, they, uh, so we're going to compete with the uh, wake up petition where the, uh, I think the hundred percent uh, giving the driver hundred percent is a uh, is a wonder is a terrific uh, uh, differentiator for us and for the riders a key differentiator for us would be the guaranteed ride the main complaint with uh, with the ride share today is that there's eleven hour cancellations that cost the uh, riders to, to miss the flights and meetings. Okay. Uh, and I think driver charges about, I think about eight or nine percent commission. Uh, so still it's small. Second, but okay, it depends absolutely because when you charge a subscription, depends how much driver can earn with you. So hence is my question. You can answer it offline. Your uh, financial okay business model and uh, how you cover like uh, customer acquisition costs with the subscription yeah. and so. So I would be yes. glad to have a look uh, more particularly. Yes, I would be. I would be happy to discuss those with you. I can assume the next slide because it has the uh, the, uh, the, the race task. Any more questions? Yes, this is Jordan. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hey man, uh, give us uh, just a bullet by bullet play on your traction product, if revenue if any betas, any POCs, you can get a chance to hear all that good stuff. Just give me the bullets. Boom, 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 boom. So from attraction, we uh, we have uh, about 600 uh, users uh, in, the South, in San Francisco Bay Area. And the drivers average about uh, about two rides per driver since uh, in 2022. And... Uh, <clears throat> From a revenue uh, uh, point of view, uh, uh, we intentionally uh, intentionally are not uh, generating generating revenue yet because we cannot afford to generate revenue without funding. Uh, the reason for that is that in California, to be classified a uh, TNC or transportation network company, uh, once you start earning money, is start getting revenue, you need to uh, will need to buy liability insurance. Which can cost about 180 to 300 thousand dollars a year, and then we're going to have to. We'll need to pay uh, uh, all these transportation fees and airport fees. No, no, no worries. Take me to the product. Where is your platform today in terms of development, maturity, availability? So the product is actually uh, uh, on the market right now, and uh, and you can download it from the website. Thank you. Good to go, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let, let someone else ask questions. What what benefits uh, do you have for investors uh, joining your project, and uh, if there is an exit strategy, which is your exit strategy? Ex well, the uh, the uh, why, why an investor should join? I'm not talking about financials, let's say, but which is like uh, I don't know the the tagline, the hook. I didn't see the hooks. <laughs> uh, yes, direct sorry. response marketing you have because you have a, a very short amount of time to catch the attention to start the discussion so from my point of view 
I don't judge startups by the pitch decks because most of the time pitch decks are done by agencies. So they're like uh, detergent uh, uh, commercials, you know? That one is only uh, the Kickstarter for the discussion, the hook. Uh, so I'm always looking at what's behind it. So in, in a nutshell, which is the, the main advantage for an investor joining this project? It's very simple. Well, you know, uh, for the investor to join this, uh, uh, to join us, uh, we believe we will be uh, we will we will be profitable in year three, and the goal is to uh, is to return ten x to investors, and we, and uh, some of our exit strategies uh, we're actually looking at it right now is SaaS licensing. Uh, to Latin American countries. So we have about three countries uh, very interested in discussing uh, licensing with us. Of course, uh, the obvious uh, exit strategy uh, would be to, uh, for, will be a buyout. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. That's about the time we have, uh, but this okay. sounds great. Uh, Jerry, thank you for um, your yeah. presentation. And our next startup is Madmatch Network, um, Amos. Amos, not Amos, Amos. Amos, I'm, That's a I great apologize. name, and he's a great I guy. apologize. I, I, you I see, I'm, I'm, not an, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, not a native English speaker, him. Jordan. He's, he's one of the better health tech companies, so guys, vote for him. And I'm screwing the voting, but vote for Amos, he's the best guy there is. Oh, come on, Jordan. Well, I apologize. You know, I'm not a native English speaker. I, I do misspell things sometimes. So um, I hope you don't mind too much. Um, and please, um, your presentation and three minutes and counting. Believe me, native speakers also do it very often. So <laughs> that's right, 100%. Go ahead, Amos. You're on mute. See, you must have his name so badly. He's, he's he's incredulous. He can't speak anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're still on mute. You're on mute. Sorry about yeah. that. Oh, you, you hear me now? We do. I have to re I have to reshare. Unfortunately, sorry. Let me go to share. Okay. Can you see my screen? We do. But we, we don't. But not your presentation yet. On my presentation. Sorry for the technical difficulty. I no just worries at all. Start, start the system over. Share. All blame to Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. So while while, while Amos okay. is this is this cute, he's a Yale graduate and he's oh. a neurosurgeon. I'm buying your time, Amos. Go ahead. He's a neurosurgeon. Okay. Yale graduate. Can you see my screen now? No, no. not yet. I'm not sure why. I, because we can I see the screen. We just can't see the presentation. Maybe try dragging it around or resharing it, it specifically. I'm gonna do it again. Uh, okay, that should share my screen. And up. Okay. Up. Okay. Special. How about. Okay, skip. I apologize. Go again. Share. Can you see my screen? Yep, you got yes. it. Yes. Okay, I do have two screens, and I think that's the problem. Uh, All you right. Just click on the swap swap displays on the top left. On the top. How's that? Yep, you got it. Okay. Yes, My apologies. Uh, too much technology. <laughs> um, Sorry for that. Um, my name is Imus Dari, and I'm the founder and CEO of MedMatch Network. And um, we're building an electronic end-to-end -end solution here at MedMatch Network. I'm a physician, I'm a neurosurgeon, and I became involved in this, pro this project because of the frustrations that I encountered myself 
trying to coordinate care for my patients. Um, healthcare access and delivery is uh, outdated, uh, is using outdated technology uh, for our patients in the US. We're still using the fax system, phone tags. We have electronic records that are all over the place. In essence, it's very inefficient. It's very costly for the providers. Um, they're losing money. And at the same time, it can be risky uh, not to be able to see your patients. It's also costly to the patients. The patients are frustrated. If you've ever had more than one doctor, you understand the frustrations of trying to navigate the marketplace. What we're building at MedMatch is a single integrated B2B to C marketplace. Uh, we have a SaaS platform for the providers, which includes ancillary service providers, those are MRI companies. And then we have a patient uh, web application as well that integrates. What's unique about our platform is the B2B to C integrated platform that leverages AI as well as data aggregation and interoperability. This is why we have an opportunity to file a provisional patent that's pending. Um, patients have an application that helps them organize and schedule, connect to doctors, access portal uh, records, and we're moving into decentralization of healthcare and a Web3 experience where patients are starting to uh, be empowered with their data. We have a robust market with a serviceable, obtainable market of 400 million. Um, just business model and projection. We are subscription based. We're using transact. We're also collecting transactional fees. We have three customers, if you will, providers and their groups, which is about a million. And we have medical service providers about thirty thousand, and then the patients about three hundred thousand here. Just a brief total revenue projection over year one, year two, year three, and four here. We can go into that later as well. Our uh, go-to-market strategy is the platform is live. We're enrolling uh, um, uh, services on the platform. This quarter, we're finally uh, completing our beta testing of the patient application, and we anticipate monetizing this year. And this, I'm sorry, this, this quarter, this year, of course. We have some traction since we launched. We have 1,600 members and adding every month. Uh, pat patent is pending. Uh, we are integrating with the electronic health record system. And we were just awarded uh, a top 10 a medical practice management by Healthcare Business uh, Review. We have, I have a robust team, uh, co-founder, who has over 20 year experience in digital um, uh, health technology and go to market strategy. I have a robust tech support as well as a lineup of advisors that are very um, uh, uh, savvy in the startup space. I can't say much about this slide, but I think it conveys the message and that's it. I will make up time here and allow you to ask me questions. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, thank you, Amos, for great presentation uh this field definitely has high potential and becomes crowded i would love to hear more about your competitive landscape you didn't mention any uh another question or, or i can ask one by one if you prefer not to forget so there are competitors out there and what really makes this stand out is our integrated platform where we are bringing in the providers and the patients. We have B2B companies, we have B2C companies, but uh, we are first mover, we have a first mover advantage uh, with our patent pending, as well as the zero sum market strategy. And what that means is in the EHR, electronic health record system, once you have a provider, they're locked in, it will take a lot to move them out. So that's giving us the edge. We have a network effect advantage and founder authority, which is me and my team, of course, and that, and we also have a high quality, low cost niche, and I'm happy to go into how we do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about patients' data? I guess it's quite a complicated uh, from regulation perspective, right? Think. Yes. So we have a regulation that came out uh, a few years ago called the Cures Act. Um, the Cures Act empowers patients with their data. So. It allows company like us to have health API data ports that patients can aggregate their data. So we're helping the patients aggregate that data and to uh, make it secure. With that, they can navigate the healthcare marketplace. They can hire and fire doctors. They can look at options. Um, what we're building really is 
doctors or providers in the driver's seat and patients in, in the passenger seat, if you will, so that there is a collaboration. The, doc, the patient gets a chance to pick who they want, uh, where they are, and review the schedule, and also leads to better collaboration and better um, compliance. You mentioned this act. Uh, it's U.S. legislation, because in Europe it might differ, right? Yes, the GDPR is 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 more Europe. Uh, in in the U.S. is HIPAA and the Cures Act, but the Cure Act is is a movement that's going global, and it's the Web three experience, the decentralization of healthcare, where companies like Cerna and uh, the, the big the big EHR company used to hoard those 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 records, and the patients gonna have access to it. And it's my data, but it's owned by another company. Now patients can easily access that data and uh, uh, allow them to be aggregated. We have APIs that connect to those EHR companies, and the patients is the only one. Uh, and this leads itself to other opportunities in blockchain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Speaking about data decentralization, uh, you mentioned the Web3 component. Can you please elaborate a little bit more? I'm sorry, say ask the question again. Yeah, at the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned that you also have the Web3 component. Could you please? Yes, elaborate? yes. Uh, we're not we're not there yet, but it, it, the platform lends itself, and especially the data part. And as you start to empower the patients, and the patients are now are able to have control of their data and uh, whoever needs to see that or work, whoever they, however they want to leverage that, um, those components are there. But uh, we are right now on our RDS system and as we migrate towards a blockchain system, I think we'll be able to implement more some of those decentralization systems for the patients. But that's, 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 that's to come. Um we have a couple of startups in our portfolio that are doing uh, not competing but i believe complementing solutions on blockchain in europe and us uh, right. so i believe we could uh, connect later in linkedin or via organizers and uh, yeah awesome. of course of course uh, that'd be great. Uh, that'd be great. That sounds great we have about a minute and a half to go so i want to make sure we have some more questions answered Sorry, I had technical issues, but thank you everyone for just picking it up. Um, and now, um, whoever wants to go next and who was- I'd order, like to just leave ahead. a comment uh, rather than a question, because mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be too short for us to answer the question. But it's just interesting that you're going after both the providers and the consumers in this business model. And I'd be interested to learn more about the commercial strategy of how you're gonna acquire both sets of customers and kind of what that pacing and cost uh, behind doing that is. Um, you know, it's already been proven that obviously the whole industry is really fragmented and trying to work with customers as patients and appeal to them and acquire them and or, you know, providers as uh, customers as well uh, has each their very own nuanced uh, pros and cons and challenges. So would like to understand that more will, you can reach out to me I'll take, uh, uh, afterwards. I'll take five seconds, I'll take five seconds to answer that and then we can go offline. But our hope is that the patient will walk into the provider's office and say, are you a MedMac yet? Because it makes my life a whole lot easier. So that's in a nutshell, that's the idea. The idea is to empower the patient to be able to make those decisions. And that's where we're going. That's definitely where the market is going. And the focus is on the market, the kind of nexus on, on, the, on, sorry, on the patients, focus on the patients, legislation on, legislation on the patients, and market mm -hmm. allocations. All right. So consumer okay. consumer derived demand on the providers. If if my patients say I'm doing a good job, I'm very happy. I'm very I'm very proud. So uh, we we mm -hmm. we providers really rely on patients. You know. Um, uh, that's great. Uh, that's yeah. great. Uh, that's about what we have time for now. And yeah. thank you very much for your presentation. Always a pleasure. And we have our last startup, a bond. Um, do you guys okay. want to take over this stage? And a bonus from Japan and Jin, please go ahead. And then after this, judges, please make sure to vote. Well, we're going to have about 30 seconds after this presentation and Q&A for you to finish voting. And then we're going to announce the winner. So Jin, stage is yours. Go ahead. Right. Let me just quickly set up a timer just in case. 
All right, let's get started. So beyond Web3, I'm the CEO of Upbond. Okay, so Web3 is all about personal ownership of data and assets. But do you really want to control your own data? So we see two problems when it comes to Web3 mass adoption. One is for the enterprises, uh, they cannot access customer information because it was supposed to be anonymous, right? For the users, it's very difficult to manage private key. So we provide an easy to use Web3 wallet that allows sharing uh, personal information. So basically we have login portion where um, you can easily log in with social login. And we have a consent layer, consent management layer that you can opt into a specific company. And we have a web-based wallet. Same as before now with Web3. So for enterprises can smoothly transition their business to Web3. And then for the user, uh, they can easily manage uh, you know, personal information, digital asset, and provide the information that you trust, uh, that the company you trust. So technology behind it, we have a secure key management so uh, solutions and then digital identity where um, it's you know, all decentralized. And then we have personal vault to make sure we uh, comply with GDPR uh, stuff. And, but obviously we don't see a lot of like web free customer experience for general user yet. So not only we provide a you know, product, uh, we also do web three incubation for large corporates. We work, we work with the best partners across the world Obviously, Polygon is our strategic partner. Uh, they support, you know, Starbucks, Nike, Disney. Uh, we also uh, work with the Dentsu, uh, which is also, okay, now I have only 50 seconds. So revenue 1.6 mil, and uh, we have very strong traction. And we position ourselves that a lot of Web3 is all about anonymous, or all about decentralization, right? But by taking advantage of DID or, um, our personal vault technology. We position ourselves that in fully Web3 technology, but we also be able to connect to a personal uh, personal uh, information. Uh, I'm a zero entrepreneur. Um, I've done five startups. I trilingual engineer, and I speak a lot about Web3 uh, in Japan. So not only we are uh, doing um, not only we are uh, doing this wallet and incubation, we potentially see hyper personalization with uh, by disrupting you know boring ads. Uh, just quickly, you know, uh, talk about uh, the future goal. Uh, we are currently at about 1.6 mil. We are track on five million US dollar in revenue in 2023. So uh, we want to update the customer relationship by empowering individuals. So thank you. Okay, questions? Yes, Jordan, uh, go ahead. You're before me. Questions. Uh, my good friend, great job. Uh, one and a half million revenue, terrific news. Uh, business model, walk me through it before Igor has your head and mine on a platter. Right, so for the wallet product, uh, we have a recurring revenue. Uh, it's uh, average $10, it's a, it was a tier, uh, $10 per 1,000 IDs or 1,000 wallet. And then for Web3 incubation, uh, we have recurring as well, but usually we start with 100K to 300K US dollar per project. Hit me with your typical KPIs, customer acquisition costs, churns, blah, 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 blah. You've made revenue, you know these numbers, give them to me. Right, so for the wallet, uh, because you know we, we replace the login layer, like you know Web2 login layer where you use social login. So uh, the... Um, drop rate, churn rate is quite low, like uh, about 1% or less. And then mm -hmm. for the Web3 incubation, uh, we have a funnels. Uh, so we work with those alliance partners and they bring a uh, project to us. And uh, the conversion is we usually do 10 um, companies and then roughly 30% goes to the POC. And your recovery for the customer acquisition cost is weeks or months? Customer acquisition cost, uh, Sorry, can you say that again? 
uh, you're acquiring customers through your partnerships. What's the cost to do so? And how fast do you recover such costs? Uh, so there's no cost for that because it's a partnership. But um, but am yeah. I answering your question? You, you yeah. did. You did. I'll step back and okay. let other people speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gaio, you next. Thank you, Gary. Great presentation. Short, small number of words, but effective. Uh, I comply with uh, Jordan about everything you discussed before. My question concerns more about your target market, and can you be more elaborative on your go-to-market strategy? Thank you. Right. So obviously, you know, after the FTX shocks, uh, situation has been changing in the world of Web3. So currently, we focus on Japan uh, because Japanese government is the only government pushing Web3 in the world, um, maybe besides Dubai. Uh, but then we have a uh, some incubation projects that goes global uh, by taking advantage of Japanese major IPs, contents, um, anime, manga stuff. And uh, that, sorry, what was the another question? Uh, well, I just wanted for you to be more elaborate on your go-to-market strategy following the discussion uh, within the target market. But I understand and understood that perfectly what your uh, uh, development path is. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Okay, Alex. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yep. Market validation. Please go ahead. Market validation. What can you say about that? Your market validation, Jim. Like, uh, is it how big the market is? No, how, how about the, who's, uh, the customers and, you know, He's value talking, proposition yeah. yeah okay so value proposition not, go ahead not, Alex. not not the same thing uh you should know market validation or you can talk about traction in uh, in general partnerships that you he, rely on etc he has a 1.6 go to the next the slide with the revenue numbers you just had it right there right there yeah, so we have uh, 1.6 million rev in revenue, and then uh, 900k is recurring. 700k is, uh, you know, the one shot, and then is that, we is have it per year, per month, or, or life uh, long? Uh, sorry, per revenue year. is annual revenue. Annual revenue, recurring wise, uh, 900k divided by 12. Um, and this year we're projecting uh, about five mil in total revenue. Um, I about... will not speak for Alexis, but you have revenue, great. Tell us how do you know this is gonna work, it's gonna scale long-term. What do you have for us to tell us it's gonna go on and on and on? Right, so again, right, recurring part, obviously- And you will have about 30 seconds to do that. So just FYI. Right. And uh, recurring revenue-wise, uh, it's growing constantly. And then also we are providing very unique case to the market, not only just GameFi or DeFi or NFT, but also a, a real you know, mass adoption case in Japan. And uh, the reason it's going to go forward is because uh, each uh, company, Japanese corporates right now have 1 million to 3 million US dollar uh, budget for Web3, but they don't know what to do. And we are in a position to really educate them and bring them to the uh, Web3 uh, world. That's kind of okay. what we're right now. Yep. All right, thank you very much. So that was our last startup. Again, uh, judges, you have about 30 seconds to maybe 45 seconds to finish voting. And then I'm gonna publish the results and show us who the winner is. And uh, meanwhile, just saying, you should feel free to drop your contacts in the chat and again, connect with each other and with our startups to discuss business after the event. So let's just finish with the votes. We've had quite a few exciting startups today, uh, very industry um, agnostic, very diverse. So looking forward to seeing who's going to be representing uh, GCD and Unicorn Events Partnership at the next Unicorn Battle. Yeah, we, we expect nothing less from Gary Fowler and his team. Always of course. Talk about, 
It's always yeah. and it's nice having my friends here. I gotta lo I love you guys. I Man, I feel like it's family hour again. I don't get to Aww. see Stanley much. You know, Victoria, I don't get to see. I, I mean, all of you. I mean, literally, I know all of you. It's amazing. Over the years, here we are, Stanley, mm -hmm. right from doing the African startups to here. And and um, what did you what did you think, Stanley? Was it interesting for you? Yeah, I mean, I think there's three companies that I'm definitely going to get um, in touch with. I think when people think about sustainability, they don't think about like energy efficiency and things like that. It's all about trying to minimize our impact. And I've seen about three companies that definitely, Gary, so thanks a lot for including me. And again, to the entrepreneurs, good job. Very yeah, good no, job. We, we appreciate it. You know, the one thing we say is intellectual capacity is evenly spread, but opportunities are not. And as you can say, we have a diverse group, you know, trying to do the right stuff. And uh, we love our startups. So I, I thank each one of you for taking your time today, too. So it's really cool. I'm excited to see, you know, listen, in my mm -hmm. own perspective, they're all winners. Sometimes when you do presentations like this, you get a little shaken. And I could see that with some of the startups. <laughs> but guess what? Practice makes perfect. So we got to do it again. We got to do it again. We got to do it again. You know, that's the way it always mm -hmm. is. It's very true. Very true. I'm going to be closing the voting and just going to share my screen in a second. Everyone's done very well today. And I hope you all also have learned something from like from each other and from our judges today. We have a winner, and I'm going to share my screen and start announcing from the third place. All right, so third place, we have tier money with the average uh, rate of 3.6. Second place, we have MadMatch Network with the average rate of 3.95. And first place, we have Abont with the average rate of 4.22. So Abont, you're proceeding to the next unicorn battle. We're going to be Thank in touch you. to ensure good that job, you're in the right place. Thanks a lot. Yeah, good job. Yeah, congratulations. Well, yeah, I, I now I right. quickly searched market validation and I should have known that. <laughs> no, you, you knew it. You started speaking about a uh, value proposition, but Jordan explained, I mean, he gave the perfect definition what market validation is. So right. just remember uh, that, uh, that from this event. Yeah. For sure. Next one, I'll do better. Thanks. You, you did such a good job. I want to take you to Network VC so we can invest in you. So call me. It's very true. Very awesome. true. Awesome. Love it. Hey. There Your you go. pitch already been successful. Yeah. Now, good job, Jen. Good job to all of you. You all did a great yes, job. Sir. You know, just we got to practice, practice. And and as Stanley said, he's got three companies. Um, you know, he's on the board of the Phillips Foundation. You know deeply connected at the bank i mean it's so you've got many of the investors today lorenzo's here from his family office etc work with them follow up guys you know contact us and we'll help for the um for the investors you know reach out to us jane is my uh, chief of staff reach out and she'll coordinate we let's go out and let's go get shit done together jane is great can i add a comment gary yeah sure so I've been lucky to listen to a lot of companies. Uh, if somebody doesn't score top one, two or three, it's not necessarily it's a bad solution or a bad company. It's just you're offering me a hamburger and we're looking for a chicken or you're offering a salad and we're looking for something else. It's just not the right match for the audience you're talking to. Uh, so stay the course, guys. This is great. You've dedicated your a lot to do this. So today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Make it happen. Yep. Good job. Yeah, All right. My, my, my three are not even in the top three. So I mean, that's a good point to mention. So thank you very much. So, I'm, I'm I curious, mean, Stanley, who, are, who are your three? Do you know, I was African Green Tech um, and Curious or whatever, and then Tia Money. Those were the three that I was looking at because they fit the um, sustainability and the financial inclusion perfectly for me can you tell me tell us how big the fund is you're working on how big is the uh the amount of money that you guys have yes, how big you know uh, we got about 30 billion um 30 billion euros under management and that 30 billion euros is divided th between three main areas agri agriculture financial inclusion and of course renewable energy so within those three areas we can invest in any type of business model from fintech or microfinance to traditional banks so if anybody's got any innovations between those three um, 
verticals, please feel free to send it because our funds cover from venture capital to much more mature listed, um, um, if I can say, operations. So we cover the whole range of business growth. Well, that's 30, 30 billion with a B? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All no, right. I mean, it's huge. And he's on the Phillips Foundation, too. I mean, we how long ago did we meet, Stanley? Like two or three years ago, right? Yeah, I think we met about um, four years ago, and then we actually got really discussing things um, about two years ago when um, COVID just hit. So, yeah. and we've been actually on a few uh, panels together discussing how we can better actually allocate funds to new innovations like this. So, I'm so happy to have joined this. I'm very impressed with what is coming out of your stable, Gary. Well done. Yeah, no, it's great. It's really great. And Eager, it's great to have you here, you know, with, uh, and we appreciate your, um, your uh, grind in the startups too, because, you know, we got to have, you know, it's, all, it's not all rainbows and sunshines. We got to make sure that each presentation gets better and they express the goodness, the, the things that they have um, and make it exciting for you. So we appreciate it. Thanks for the comments. It's appreciated. You. Can you t tell us, yeah, Eager, um, you've had quite a few uh, successful companies. Um, What's the biggest success you've had as you're going down through? Which company is, uh, you know, number one? Uh, uh, Miro. Miro. How big is that? Miro.com. Uh, last round valuation, 17.5 billion. How, how big? 17.5 billion last wow. valuation. And uh, we let the uh, seed round at valuation of uh, 5 million. So it is. Yeah, there you go. 7 billion. I know. Uh, 17, 17 billion. Uh, 17 billion. Amazing. And, uh, second one is a deal with valuation of 12 billion. 12 billion. Yeah, so okay. I, I hope that, okay, <laughs> to find uh, more companies like this, it doesn't happen every day, but it happens. Yeah, I mean, we've got such a round rounded group of investors. I mean, Lorenzo's family started banking in Italy in 1482. They funded Leonardo da Vinci, just FYI. I mean, you're talking about all the old, old uh, uh, money. But the thing that I really like is that, you know, the friends are here, all of you, Adrian, all of you, Yuria, Leon, you're all here because you, you know, you all have the same idea. You want incredible startups and it's great. Did you say yeah, something? Yeah. Yes, I want to add something interesting and just closing after the beautiful uh, experience for, I think, all of them. My family have uh, invented the, the check in the 1400 as a solution for a problem that was at that time was to keep privacy on how people were investing money. And it's almost something that today we still have after 600 years. And there was no innovation after the Medici Bank in the 1400 in the banking industry. Um, there is a lot of company who wants to now try to enter in the fintech and payment processing and things. The bigger problem is that still we have a lot of lock on uh, bureaucracy and things to make it digital, becoming really digital. And so a lot of companies should uh, uh, think carefully on what they're doing and how they can achieve what is their goal. Uh, but the Medici family had something similar at the time. At the time, people were coming to pitch to my family in the 1400 in Florence, uh, all kinds of innovation. And the biggest innovation was a man who was named Galileo Galilei. And he arrived there and knocked on this uh, Medici Academy and said, can I have $600 million of the modern <coughs> man today to create the biggest instrument to discover the star? And the Medici, after hearing a pitch by this old man with a big beard and long, they decided to finance uh, Galileo Galilei and give him the money to create uh, an instrument. And he discovered part of the star. And then on the conference press, uh, they ask him, how do you call this discovery? And they call it uh, in Latin, Sidera Medici, who means star of Medici. So the stars were having in the name of Medici. So probably get in the future, there will be some investor that will call some of his, uh, some of his uh, invention or discovery with your name. So, you know, you may have some kind of heritage in the future too. You so, know, uh, you know something, I don't well, know about that, Lorenzo, but having you guys all here, and uh with the power behind each and every one of you is great and and uh, i really appreciate it um and for all the startups you know you've done a great job let's keep going getting shit done you know this is not the end of the journey this is just the beginning 
that Thanks. sounds great. I think at that, maybe I'll stop sharing the screen and we'll also stop the live recording. Um, I, I think we can have some informal networking for anyone who wants to stay behind. Obviously, we want to respect your time. So if you wish to go, you can go. But uh, off recording, you can discuss um, startups, you can discuss potential deals. So you can uh, talk about uh, money if you wish to. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. Thank you for the audience for watching. Um, we can stop the live now and the recording as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, the Victoria, thank you very much.